Hi guys, welcome back. Uh, today I'm going to do a tutorial on how to start your own website to sell your digital products. So that's any of your printables, your templates, um, courses, memberships, all completely for free. So I'm Sarah and I help empower creatives and entrepreneurs with the tools that they need to create a successful business. If this sounds like something that you'd like, then please subscribe to my channel and um, don't forget to like this video and drop me a comment. Let me know what you think. So creating a website when you're just starting out can be really daunting. Uh, especially if you don't have the budget just yet to hire a web designer and you're trying to sort of figure it out for yourself. Especially when you're selling digital products um, because I know a lot of um, countries chat and make you, you have to uh, collect and remit things like VAT, sales tax and there's all that to, to sort of deal with. Um, now I found a solution that deals with all of that for you and you can do it completely free. So let's dive in. Right, so to do our website, we're going to be using a, a Payhip. It's a website called Payhip. Uh, I will leave the link in the description. It may be an affiliate link, just so you're aware. So uh, Payhip is a really, really good platform and I've recently been using it for one of my other um, income streams. And it's really the, re the reason I really like it is because they deal with all of the um, sort of VAT for EU buyers and you know certain countries you have to collect sales tax and they deal with all of that so it's not sort of an accounting nightmare um, so I'll just go over to where it says pricing and um, obviously it's completely free um, and when I say free what I mean is there's no sort of monthly like with a lot of other websites such as Squarespace, Shopify, etc. There is a monthly fee for them hosting your website. With Payhip, they don't charge a fee. It's zero percent, um, or zero dollars per month. And um, they do charge a five percent transaction fee, which I feel is pretty pretty reasonable. Um, you know, I sell on other marketplaces, particularly Amazon, where they, you know, a third of my income literally goes to pay for the fees. So it's quite low compared, um, and that includes unlimited products, unlimited features, and unlimited revenue. Uh, there are upgrades where you can pay a monthly fee if you want to, and then your transaction fee is either lowered or it's taken off. So that's obviously an option there as well. So I will go back to the sign up. Now, the reason I really like it is I used to use this just for collecting payments. And then I would embed it into a website that I use for, for this particular product that I was selling. And um, But quite recently, they've added this feature where you can have a storefront and not only have a storefront, but it can actually have it appear with navigation, just as you would a website. You can link a domain and you it's got quite a lot of decent sort of features for SEO, which I was really impressed with. Um, so let me quickly get started here and I will um I will see you at the other end. Now you've created an account, you've put in your email address and you've chosen a password, it will ask you for your name or business name or however you want it to be displayed on your store. So what I'm gonna do, I thought I'd have a little bit of fun with this video and because I already have a website but it's not linked to my YouTube to this YouTube channel. So I don't yet have a web presence. So I thought just because I have quite a few little freebies that I've been giving out, I will create this just as a place to put some of my free um, templates and things like that. So I'm going to put um, uh, hmm. Yeah, that can, that can work. So, yeah, you would get an extension, payhip.com forward slash, and then your store name. You can, if you want, and I will show you how um, you can do that or where you would look for that. If you want to purchase a domain, you can actually link your domain to your shop so you don't have to, you know, it just looks better and it's better for SEO as well. That search optimization. So it comes to here now. It's asking to um, add your first product. So I'm going to do that now. So add a product. 
And then you have all of these options. So you can add a digital product course, membership, a physical product. So that's really good for those who, you know, if you have any sort of handmade goods or um, print on demand goods. Um, you can also sell co coaching services, you know, however that would look. And then you can bundle products together as well. So I'm going to put digital product. You can use this for paid and free products. Uh, so I'm going to upload my product file. Let me just think where I've put it. <laughs> Let's have a look. I'll upload the brand board, the one that I did last, um, the last video I did where I created a brand board and template, showed you how to do that. So it wants to add the PDF. So you upload your PDF file. So whatever digital product you have, upload it there, add your product title. I'm going to put brand board template. And you can do your price in US dollars, in pounds, euros, etc., whichever currency. So I'm going to do it in pounds because that's my currency. And then I'm going to put it as zero because it's it's nothing. So I'm going to upload a product image, um, mock up. I think I have one. I don't know if it's the right size, but we'll no, it's not. Um, let's try this one. Remove that one. That one's better. <laughs> it's a square. <laughs> so that's my brand board template, and you know I've got it all that in there. So add a description. Board template. Maybe. Obviously, you you can make it a little bit more elaborate than I have. So I'm going to make that visible so everybody can see it. So you do have advanced options as well. Now, if you automatically subscribe customers to a mailing list, as far as I'm aware, it would go onto your followers list and then you would then manually add them to your mailing list. Uh, so you add the product and then it gives you a link. So you can just copy and obviously paste that link across. So show me the product page for a nice look. Uh, let's go back to our dashboard. So that's your first product added. So set up check up, check out. So we're going to do that. Um, and that comes under your account and settings if you, you know, want to find it later on. So you can link your PayPal account, you can link your Stripe account, and you can set your default currency. And then you can put it on here so it would appear in your bank statement. So you could you know, put your shop name or a shortened version of your shop name so that when it appears on your bank statement, you know that it's from this particular shop. So I'll just quickly add my PayPal and Stripe accounts and then I'll see you back in a moment. So once you've added your, I've not added my Stripe account just yet, because I thought just for the sake of speeding through this tutorial, I've not added that just yet. But once you've added your means to be paid and you've typed in, you know, all your currency and everything else, go back to your dashboard and then customize your store. Now you can actually find that under store and it will just take you there to the store builder. So I am going to customize the design. So let me have a look. So that's the product. We've got a little bit of an about me. So I'm going to change that. And uh, so this is your shop. So if you look at your website, if I preview it and it comes up here and it looks pretty pant at the moment, it's, there's nothing really there. It's just a shop front. And, and obviously you've got a contact and I'm going to make this look a little bit nicer. So if we go back, oh, hold on that. So all of your pages are here. So you've got your contact, your product, uh, which is this, and you've got all products, which is a whole page. This is set at your home page at the moment. And then obviously down here, you would have subscription pages. So if you added a subscription, then it would it would appear on a separate page. So you could obviously get to it at the navigation here. And then you've got blog posts pages. So you've, adding a blog is a really, really good thing to do for your um, search optimization. So obviously the more content you have, the more Google is going to pick up your your website for people that are interested in whatever you're doing so what i'm going to do i'm going to add a page and i'm going to do it as a custom page uh, page title i'm going to have this as a home page i'm going to see if this works <laughs> right so this is a home page so now if we go to the shop 
it would just have the products on. So we're going to go back to the home page, click it here, and we're going to make it look a bit prettier than it is now. So I'm going to add on the header, I'm going to add my logo. So uh, choose a logo. I'm just going to upload one that I did if I can find it. Right, I found my logo and I've got it. So I'm going to upload it here. So you literally click on upload, find it on your computer and choose your image. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. Uh, not that big. Um, so and let me just have a look because we go to the top here. You can have a look and see what it would look like on mobile. And you can add a different logo for mobile so it just fits better if you want i'm not going to do that at the moment because i just want to get this i want to be able to do the full tutorial for you so i've added the logo in there so we're going to go back now nothing will save fully until you publish your page so obviously these are all um sort of save it saves it as a draft until you publish your page and then it would go live let's go back again out of the header and then we're going to add some sections now what I would usually do when I'm designing a website is I would add things like my fonts and branding and colors. Um, and I will do that as I'm sort of going through and I'll show you how to edit all of your bits. But what I'm going to do first is do the, the building blocks of the website so I can sort of get it all together. And then I'm going to have a, I'm going to show you how to change all of your brand colors to ones that you, you know, you like better than the, the ones that it comes with. So what I've done here, I've gone to add a new section. So I'm going to, I'm going to have a nice sort of image with some text as our header. So image with text. And you have all different options. Now, it is sort of limited in styling compared to, you know, if you're used to using something like Shopify or Squarespace, you know, but it, you know, these sort of things do improve as time goes on. So I've got a, a nice header image with some text. And I'm just going to change this and make it look a little bit nicer. So I'm going to replace the image. I'm going to add a new one. Uh, choose this image and save changes. And I'm just going to move this down a bit. Um, because I don't quite like it there. Text position. I'm going to move that to the middle. Move it down a bit. Kind of looks a bit better. Um, and again, you can add, you can change the colors. I'm actually going to add, oh, I'm going to change this to a, the white color. So these are all of your, your color schemes. So obviously, I don't know if you watched the previous video I did about brand boards, but like I mentioned, you have sort of a main color and then you would add some neutrals like your white, dark or, or black and white to your sort of, you know, text and background and things. And then you would add, you know, like a nice light color, a dark color and a highlight. The highlight would be the things like, you know, buttons and things just to add a little bit of a spot color here and there. Um, and you can change these. You can also change them as you're going in as well. <laughs> so that's that. And I'm going to change this text as well. because I'm, So this is all your white. So these are your, your uh, color schemes, but I'll go through that when we've finished. So I'm just going to change this text quickly. I'm going to open up a... Um, a notepad. I tend to keep everything on a notepad. And uh, yeah, so that looks pretty nice. So I'm going to save, save changes. I'm going to change the fonts in a little while and all of the other bits and bobs. So I'm going to add a section. I think I'm going to add. I'm going to add an image, um, just a plain image. Now, when I'm doing a website, I like to add little highlight. Uh, this is the, the styling of um, paper is a little bit limited, but you can find ways around it. So you can create, like for, for example, for here, I've created in Canva, if I just go and find them, dividers, that's the word, just to divide the sections of your home page. And I've done them in a nice little gold color, which um, I found just by going to here. Um, and I just typed in gold at the top and it brought this nice color, which I think is quite a nice sort of flat gold color. And just to add a little bit of oomph to my bits and bobs. So I'll go back to the editor and I'm just going to place 
one of them in here. Um, now, if you have a look, sorry, I should have said, if you have a look, um, I can't just do the little, little element and splash it on because otherwise it would be massive. So I've actually had to create this full divider size in Canva and um, make this quite small, you know, so it, it doesn't take over the whole page. And it does work in mobile as well. So I'm going to add that in now. Um, what is this one? So I'm just going to open that up. And I'm just going to choose that image. And turn down the opacity. Because that's really if you have an image with text over the top. So you can actually see the text. But we don't want it over our elements. And then I'm just going to put some text here. I think I'm just going to add a little bit of text. Just to sort of say, you know, what it's all about. Simple basic text. What did I put here? So yeah, just what am I doing? <laughs> yeah, that'll do us. And then I'm just gonna see what it looks like on mobile. Um go back to this. You can put a button underneath here, you can here as well, which I'll I forgot to do, but I'll do that now. So now that's got it as a, a heading too. I'll go through the headings as well. Remember to keep remembering to explain things as I'm going on. So I'm going to make the, 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 the section height is small. So obviously that changes how wide this section is. So I'm going to leave that as small, but I'm going to make the width medium. So it just spreads it out a little bit. And then the text alignment is in the center already. So that's fine. Everything's centered. Yeah, that's fine. That'll do me. And then I'll go back. Before I go any further, I'm going to change my font. Yeah, change store style. So you can go to fonts. Okay. Because I don't want this font here. So what I'm going to, I quite like it as a, whatever that font is, it's a basic um, sans serif, but I quite like it as a, a font for the body text. But for the headings, I want something that's a bit different. Oh, yeah, so heading fonts. So you can change the headings and the paragraphs. So the headings would be these, and the paragraphs is your body fonts. So and for the headings, I'm going to change it to a serif font. I'm going to go with this one. I quite like this. It's quite, it's got a nice look about it. I do quite like this font. Um, and it's a free, free font that comes with it. I'm just going to make it a bit tiny, tiny bit smaller just so it doesn't look for me on mobile. Let me just preview that. Yeah. Go back to desktop. And again, you can change all of your heading one, two, three, four, and such. Now, the rule is when you're doing this for, for SEO purposes, always make sure that your headers are, your main header is in heading one. Your headers always have to be, have headers. So it has to be, it's not so much on this actually, because I think it does it automatically for you. Um, but that's just something to be aware of as well. But I'll go through all of the um, SEO bits and bobs. I'm going to leave the paragraphs as is. You can change your buttons as well. Quite like that as it is. Um, so again, your colours. I'll do it while I'm here. So your colours, you can change your colour palette. So you edit your colours. And then, so for example, if you're doing uh, the white, it was what colour everything would be. Um, so your headings, paragraphs, when it's on white. So most of that would be black. Um, you know, buttons, if it's on the white background, what colour would your buttons be? So again, that would be kind of your accent colours that you had. Um, and you can change all of this. You just go into it and then you find your hex number. Now, if you remember the brand board that we did, and that goes through, you know, how to brand um, your business, uh, create these brand boards, which have like your colours and um, fonts. And you can go and you can just type in the hex numbers and it would find that colour for you or you can use a colour picker um, and you've got all of your bits here so you can change that under the white and then you can start again and then you can change you know you can go to the light background so what what would your colours be here and you can change all of your little bits I'm not going to go through that because it would take me too long for this um, tutorial I'm just going to do it so you can see what the finished product looks like. So I'm going to add another section here. And I'm going to, again, I'm going to do another image. And I'm going to make it small, change the background. When you're uploading your images, 
uh, this is another thing to, that I'm just remembering now. Um, make sure that you're not calling your images like 2.jpg. I'm just doing this because I'm doing it quick. But obviously your SEO, Google searches everything. So I would call, try and make sure, particularly with your blog posts, if you've got an image that goes along with it, call it the name of your blog post if it has keywords in. So it picks it up. So all of your images have keywords if you can, which is to do with your website. So what I've done next, I've um so the opacity. Again, if you're used to using PayHip, then please drop me a comment and let me know if there is anything that I've missed on here because I'm trying to remember everything. So I'm going to do a list under here. So I'm going to do this one here and it doesn't kind of match with the aesthetic. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to change the, click on the first column and I'm going to replace this image. Now what I've done, I've got some, I've created some little elements. Now I've done these in Canva. Uh, so I've just literally gone into Canva, opened up a document and quickly, and I just, you know, grabbed some elements. Um, this one I created just with text and um, just to go on as little navigations. Uh, and then I downloaded it as a JPEG. Try and make it as small as possible. I know I've watched a few people with website demonstrations and they don't always tell you this, but if you have massive images, it will slow down your website. So, and then I would add a title, put my channel, and then that's it. Button, click. Yeah. I don't know. Paste link, right? So I'm just going to go to my YouTube channel and I'm just going to paste it in there. Click on it. Don't like the colour of that, so I am going to change that a bit later. Um, so again, you can change all of your bits, uh, aspect ratios, I think I've done these square one to one. Oh, actually they're not, they're slightly off. Um, let me just see, it's down as a DAT, so it'll, it'll resize depending on what size your image is. Um, so your heading category, that's this here, it's at heading two. I'm actually going to take the heading out because it doesn't aesthetically look good. Um, and these are all heading three. Again, you can change the size of your headings like I've showed you before. Um, and again, you can change all of your bits and bobs. I'm going to leave that as is for now because it doesn't look too bad. I'm just going to center it actually. Um, so the text alignment is centered, yeah. And I'm going to save that and I'm going to do the same for each column. So I'm actually going to change the color of these buttons because I don't like the green. It doesn't really go. So I'm going to make it a different color. So buttons. Um, no, it'll be colors. Colors. So this is on a white background. So obviously I would take the time, which I will do when, I, when I'm not doing this tutorial, just to go through all of your colors and um, and obviously change it so that it's you know fits in with I'm just gonna I don't need to do that. I quite like this sort of really dark magenta color it's quite nice I quite like that so I'm gonna just save that I don't want the border on it so I'm just going to copy the hex number and paste it so it's the same colour and change that. So as you can see, it's starting to come together. I, I will change this again at a later date, but you can just quickly preview on mobile. Um, you can see it's, it all sort of fits in. Uh, 
this bit here doesn't on mobile but i'm not too bothered and i'm just going to preview it so you can have a look what it looks like as a website and this is like your home page so people can navigate to your channel click let me just check it i'll change the hover uh, button as well and it takes you to the website uh, to my youtube and again click here and it will take you to the shop with all your products on so as you can see it's really sort of starting to come together what i would add on here is a sign up link for people to sign up to your mailing list so that would be quite handy to have again when you have a mailing list on here you can't link it to so if you have for example like um, mailchimp or um, any you know aweber any sort of mailing list already it doesn't you, there's no way to connect it but it, it saves it i'll just quickly this section and i'll explain it saves it as a follower and then those followers it collects their information and then you can add it into your mailing list um manually that's the only way around it but it's a really good way of collecting email addresses people that want to be kept informed so i'm going to go down to newsletter uh, I'm going to pick this one, the one with the background, and uh, I'm going to change this. Yeah, that'll do. Subscribe. So I'm going to change the background. And what I've done, again, I've done one of these dividers. Uh, I'll just go and find it so you can see what size I've used for my mailing list. I've made it quite pretty with some sort of fancy little elements from that I found on Canva. And I think I made this a little bit bigger. I made it a thousand pixels wide by 300 high. So I'm going to upload this. That's the one. And I'll choose that image. I'm just going to make this darker so you can see it. Um, we don't want the overlay on there. And color scheme, that's the one, white. So um, I'm going to add a little divider in here just to sort of finish it off, the home page. And let's go back. So as you can see, these are all the sections that are adding up your home page and um so you're just adding each section you can move them around i'm going to show you how to do that now with the next one so i'm just going to do an image again plain image i'm going to make it small uh on the background i'm going to take off the opacity because we're not adding text and i'm going to upload another little divider on here i think it's this one it's a little mailbox, I quite like it, it's quite cute. Um, I'm gonna save that. And if you just hover over that image, you can actually reposition it so you can move it up. So let's just preview what our website looks like. So yeah, that, that's kind of starting to come together. You can make this box, obviously you can change all of your colors and everything on there. Um, and then it just goes down you've got all your little navigation settings and then when somebody types the email address in it just takes them to their you know to saves it into your followers so then you can do it now what i'm going to do now i'm going to go over to the shop so what am i doing i'm going to go over to the shop page so ah okay You go to this little thing. So this is your home page that we've created. Now it isn't set as your home page at the moment. So I'm going to go to this little um, wheel at the top and you can set as your home page. I'm not going to do it just yet because first I'm going to go into the page settings um, and I'm going to create, I'm going to actually change the, the, the page title. To my um, my website name page. I'm going to go to SEO. This allows 
uh, Google to pick up your, um, you know, your keywords and things like that. So your title of your website, I would put, you know, your, your website name. And uh, I've spelled that wrong. <laughs> and your description. So uh, I'm not going to do that now. But what I would add is um, think about your website from looking at it as, as a buyer. Uh, what problem are you solving for your customer? And then start to, you know, you can use external keyword uh, generators and you can do some searches within Google um, based on, you know, what your, your service you're offering is. Uh, think about the keywords of what your customer would search into Google when they're finding your website. So, and then you just put it on there and it will, it will be picked up by the little Google bots and then you can change it. And then I would set it as your home page. And now that is your home page. So that's your landing page where the customer comes and lands on that page. And uh, I would go over to your shop page because you need to change that about section. Um, So again, the more products you have in here, it would start to fill up. Um, and I was, <laughs> that's definitely not not a good look for me. <laughs> Just replace that. Um, let me have a look. Oh, I've got an old photo here, but I'll use that one. Um, again, you just you know you can put your little bit about you on there and save that. I'm not actually liking that. I'm going to change this to. White. Save changes and um, I'm going to add a section. And I'm just going to upload another little. Um, Dividers. So I'm, I'm just going to add this in just to finish it off. Save. I'm just going to pull that up. So I'm going to move this section there. And, and then obviously you've got your contact page, which you can update with all of your contact information. So let me go to preview. I'm just going to have a quick look at it. What I'm going to do is click on there and it should take you back to the home page. We've got all our bits, we've got our shop page. I'm just going to go through some sort of basic things. Um, right, let me just. All products. Navigation links. Edit navigation links. Shop. Edit. Collections. <laughs> now it should work. All products. There we go. Um, apply changes. Save changes. So now when we when we click on it, it should again should take us to the shop, etc. There we go. So that works. So I'm just gonna see how it looks on a mobile. Uh, each page. And then you click on there and it takes you back to your home page. You can add your home page in your navigation if you want to. Um, again, you just as I did then, and I edited the um, the navigation, and it it you know edited it at the top. Um, to desktop, you know, just edit it here, and you can actually add your home page on there if you want to. So you could add home and it would come up on the mobile so they could click back and go back to the home page so you can add a blog page as well I would obviously 
you know, put a few blog posts on the home page. Um, now to do that, you would need to exit the store builder and you can go, where is it? Blog posts here. So you would add your blog post, post title, add your blog post in here. You can upload an image. Um, and then obviously you can have different, uh, I, I, would, I would guess that's like categories, advanced options, you could include your name. So obviously when you're uploading images to your blog, make sure you're um, saving your image as like your blog post name uh, and then .jpg or whatever it is. Um, let me see. So to add a custom domain, you can go to store. This is how you access your website, your back end, so the, the store builder here. And then you've got your blog posts here as well. And so you can obviously add and change. And then you've got domains. Now, if you want to connect an existing domain, you you just go here, find who your domain uh, regist registrar is. If it isn't listed here, you would you could then go into, um, so if you had a completely different host or provider, you could then just go to their website and it will just bring you up their information as to how to uh, change your name servers, et cetera. Um, and then you would, type in your, uh, your domain name here so it would connect to your domain. Um, if you're changing your domain to your own domain, so for example, if I wanted to purchase awakenedentrepreneur.com or whatever it is, then make sure that you're changing URLs to, to shortened names. So um, for example, if you do a blog post, you don't want it to say um, you know xyz.com forward slash and then a load of rubbish. You want it to say the name of what your post is so that Google can pick it up a lot easier. You know, you don't just want any sort of random URL. So that's obviously something to take into account with your um, SEO as well. Now, you can connect Google. Let me just, I can't actually remember how to do this. Let me just go to settings. Yes. Advanced settings. So if you go to your settings under account and then come down to advanced settings here, let's have a look. You can add your Google Analytics. So basically you would need to set up a Google Analytics account. So you would literally just come over to Google and Google Analytics. You would set up an account and then you would, it would give you an ID. So you add your ID into here. And what it does, it, it links your account to Google. It can start to index your website content um, so it gets picked up with the Google bots. So again, there's all the different um, settings so you can have a look through them. I'm pretty new to PayHip. I've only been using it for maybe a couple of months uh, for one of my products. And uh, I've only recently discovered that you can do this, you know, the whole storefront and you can make it look um, you know, pretty nice. It's obviously not going to compete with a professionally designed website, but it does do the job and it's really good if you have memberships, etc., because you don't have to add in plugins and all the other stuff. Um, and it's all all the DAT and everything's taken taken care of. Now I have pulled up the PayHip Optimize SEO. So if you just Google PayHip SEO then it will come up with this page and it gives you tips um, of how to uh, make sure that your website is fully optimized for SEO. So, and it goes through all of the things like adding, uh, oh, your images, you can add, I think I'm going to quickly do this. Your images, you can add the uh, text, but then if it just does that in the blog post, but say you go in an image, um, did this earlier. I can't remember how we did it. Oh, here we go. So you go to the image. So the image is here. It's in the background. And you click in here. You can actually add a description here. Um, so you can, you know, that obviously keywords, really, really important um, for your SEO optimization. If it's an image for a blog post, make sure that you're adding the alt text. So you can add the name of the blog post if it's something particularly searchable. Um, and again, you can do all of that with any courses that you add. So you can sell courses, you can sell, a, you know, you can even start affiliate programs on here so other people can promote your products. Uh, I really like it. Um, I have to admit, I think it's pretty good. 
if there's anything I've missed, obviously, and you are aware of Pay Hip, let me know in the comments. And um, let me just see if there's anything else that I've missed. Yeah, I think that's pretty pretty much it. So, you know, if there's anything that I have missed, then obviously let me know. Uh, any any questions that you have, drop me a comment, and I will. If I can't answer it, I'll try and find the answer for you. And um, I hope you've enjoyed this. Have a play with it, you know, because it is completely free. There's no trial period that you have to sort of scramble to get your website done within that trial period before they they start charging you to use it. Uh, so let, let me know. Drop me a comment if you have any and um, thank you all ever so much for watching and um, I will see you in another video. Thank you. Bye-bye.